Hello everyone, Vicki Verley here, the Rock and Roll Prophetess. This is going to be your August of 2024 Psychic Tarot reading for each sign. We're going to do a little bit of astrology, then we're going to go sign by sign and pull cards. We're going to pull cards from the Rock and Roll Tarot deck, and we're going to pull cards from the Songs for the Journey Home Tarot deck, and then we're going to clarify with an Animal Totem from the Beast Mistress Animal Oracle cards. We're also going to pull lots from the Lots of Love, the Lots of Answers, and the Lots of Proverbs. So before we get into the sign by sign, let's do a brief overview of some of the astrology for this month. And by the way, happy birthday to all the Leos and Virgos, who, all the Virgos who are born in August, that is. This is going to be a most powerful time of your solar return. We'll talk a little bit more about it as we get into your sign by sign reading. Some of the major astrology highlights is the fourth, we're going to have a new moon in Leo. This is your new moon to start your new intentions. The very next day on the 5th, Mercury goes retrograde in the sign of Virgo. By the time we get to the 14th, Mercury retrogrades back into the sign of Leo. And then on the 19th, we're going to have the full moon in Aquarius. This is when things come to fruition. This is also a good time to do all your releasing and letting go. Um, on the 22nd, the sun moves from Leo into Virgo. And then uh, Mercury goes direct on the 28th. I put it up here. The featured reading this month is going to be the eclipse readings. I am going to open up for the fall eclipse readings. I haven't done eclipse readings in a while. I don't always do them. But it's real interesting because we're going to, this is a transitory eclipse. We've been having the eclipse in Aries and Le uh, Libra for quite some time. It's always in opposite signs where the node is, okay? So it's been in Aries and Libra, Aries and Libra. And now it's going to be moving into Virgo and Pisces over the next year or so. But it's interesting because this year, I mean, the fall here, or, the, you know, the September, October, depending on your location, fall in the Northern Hemisphere, we're going to get a little peak of that Pisces energy until we have the last eclipse in Libra, too. So it's the last eclipse in Libra, which is interesting, of this almost two-year period or so. So how these eclipses have kind of, what's happened over these last couple of years, what's winding down and everything. And then also a little peak of what's to come over the next, you know, couple of years because we have, I'm looking at 2025. Now we do have one more eclipse in March and Aries, but then the rest is Virgo, Pisces, Virgo, and it's going to be Virgo, Pisces from here on out. So this is an interesting one. I don't always offer the fall eclipse readings, but I thought I would. It's going to be available for a very limited time, only until, you know, we get into like September because uh, there's other things coming up, up the pike here, or down the pike, so one of those. One last little note, if you enjoy my content and you want to get more, we, I do offer the weekly readings on Patreon. It's astrology, more astrology than this. We really look at the, the week, the astrology aspects for the week, and then I do pull two cards sign by sign, and you can find that information below. By the way, you can find me at vickiverly.com. Do not be fooled by imposters, and I'm the, you're watching the Rock and Roll Prophetess on YouTube. Okay, without further ado, let's go ahead and get into it from sign by sign. We're going to start, of course, with the first sign of the zodiac, which is Aries. Okay, let's go ahead. What do I, I feel like I want to put those on top. We might change it up. We'll start with the Rock and Roll Tarot back on top. Okay, this is for Aries Sun, Rising Moon, or anybody who has Aries in, you know, in their chart or cross watchers. You know, it's just all things Aries. If that resonates with you or you have some connection to that energy, then this reading might be for you. Let me shuffle up for Aries, and this is going to be Aries reading for August of 2024. And we're going to get three cards for Aries, starting with the Two of Cups, the Soulmate card. Next, we're going to have the Star, beautiful, beautiful energy of love, light, spiritual blessings. And last, we're going to have the Six of Rods. Wow, you're starting out great, Aries. All right, let's move over, and let me grab a few more stones here. I like to have some of my stones here. Um, and let's go ahead and get some card shuffling from Songs for the Journey Home. And we're going to do three cards for Aries, Sun, Rising, Moon. We've got the Fool in the Upright. Next, followed by the Page of uh, Fire coming in. Coming in. These cards are red, waxing and waning. And then finally, we have also coming in, or no, leaving, the Ace of Cups. Okay. Well, it looks like some of you could have met somebody for sure. You got the Ace of Cups, the Two of Cups. You may have met somebody already because when the Ace is waning, when these cards are this way is waxing, coming into effect, in effect, waning. So it's sort of waning. Ace of Cups means this new beginning in love maybe already happened. 
could be a new beginning in love, but it also could be some kind of new creative in endeavor if it's something you're not looking, you know, not looking for love necessarily. Usually with the Two of Cups, you know, it's it's a lot of times it's going to be that love, that love, uh, romantic love uh, relationship. But, you know, we do have soulmates in all walks of life. It's not always just romantic relationships. Whatever it is, though, it's absolutely heaven sent with this beautiful star energy just right in the center of everything. You're really in touch with your higher self. You're really working with your guides you're really riding that wave and following those synchronicities and the star is just raining down blessings on you bring in to influence the page of fire they call it the flame songs but it's like the wands or the rods so this is a um you know it could be messages coming in the time of leo which again we're going to be in leo all the way up to the 22nd here but it also could be a young person. Some of you, this could be a young person that's coming, going to be born into the world. They're still in spirit and they're going to be born in the world because of the child on the thing there. And you're going to be, you know, you are a soulmate to them as well. You have the Fool card. So the Fool is always about having that lighthearted energy, being open, being free, being willing to go, you know, where the wind blows, whatever way the wind takes you, not not trying to lay too much. It goes very well with the star energy, you know, not trying to control things too much. Sometimes Aries, you guys are, I mean, you're a dynamo, but sometimes you can just be, let's go, let's go, let's do, let's do. This is a time to receive. Also because we do have the Mercury retrograding this month, for almost the whole month, pretty much from the 5th to the 28th. So, you know, it's not a time to forge ahead necessarily. You're going to have a major victory or a major coup here by the end of this month here. Six of Rods is like you're getting noticed, you're getting that recognition. Paired with the star, you could take the star just literally like you are the star. Baby, I'm a star. Might not know it now. <clears throat> Might not know it now. What is that? <laughs> I think it's Prince. Because baby, I'm a star. It's really high. I can't hit it. <laughs> you might not know it now. All right, let's get the star. Let's see where you're going to be a star Aries in an animal totem card for more information. For Aries, got the frog. Things are changing. Things are happening by leaps and bounds when you get to, with the frog energy. It's also transformation because the frog starts out with the newt and the tadpole. You know, it goes through all its various stages of metamorphosis. And then finally, this is the final stage. This is when you've come to full fruition. You have or whatever you're manifesting here. Okay, Rainmaker. I need to change my. I didn't. Well, I didn't. I guess I did realize I was going to be reading, but we're going to have to get the stronger glasses if I can find them. Oh darn it! I don't have them handy here. I suppose I could get by with the other ones, but I really do need strong ones. <laughs> Let's see. Let's try to get by with this one. Rainmaker, Alchemist, Clairaudient, Fertility, Transformation, Metamorphosis safe passage into the netherworld the final stages of growth you have arrived yeah the final stages of growth that's what i was referring to just now when i was talking but also this safe when i read out loud that safe passage to the netherworld you know that kind of reminded me too of like the star energy like there's this ah oh, i spotted them the star the, the little fairies in the netherworld just show me where my glasses are that i need <laughs> Here we go. oh much better yeah so that star energy, that can be the netherworld, you know, because that could be like the fae or whatever it might be. Okay, let's get some lots here. These are the casting lots that I've made for myself. There's three different kinds. We're going to start with the lots of love. First one's lots of love for Aries. This is timing. So yeah, you know, with this ace, with the timing thing coming up here, and then this ace of rods or ace of cups moving out like it already happened, maybe you met somebody from a long time ago and with the Mercury retrograde, it's going to come there. The timing wasn't right, but now the timing will be right. But you can apply that to a job or anything. Maybe this is Ace of Cups is your dream job. And maybe the timing wasn't right at that point, but now you're going to call you. Because, you know, you could have soulmates in your workplace for sure, or in the career path for sure. Okay, next let's get uh, our lots of answers. You've got unsure. So unsure at this time. Okay. Finally, the lots of proverbs for Aries for the month of August. This one wants to come. I can't get around it. A bird in the hand is worth two in the bush. Well, that just means, you know, don't don't poo-poo some offer that's being made in hopes of something better coming later. You know, you may not want to be, you know, putting down solid roots on a lot of things with the Mercury retrograde this month, but, you know, 
maybe you met somebody and you were like, oh, I'm not, I don't want to, or even a job, you know, like whatever this new Ace of Cups here was, you didn't want it. Could have been, you know, I don't want it. And then you're holding out for something else. And now you're realizing, hey, maybe that wasn't such a bad deal. Maybe that wasn't such, maybe I do, maybe I do want to date that person. Maybe I do want to work in that with that person. Maybe I do want to do this thing. So, you know, with the Mercury Retrograde, because it does rule the mind also, you know, you could be doing a lot of thinking, too, right now. Thinking about things to come and, you know, decisions that you've made, this Ace of Cups that you've already made, have already passed. But you may be thinking about it, you know, and more right now. All right. Well, thanks for tuning in, Aries. Hey, don't forget to check your sun, rising, and moon. If you want to get in on that eclipse reading, it's going to be available for a limited time. It is pretty interesting. You know, it's interesting for you, too, Aries, because they have been in your sign. There's Aries and Libra, and now they're going to move into the next phase. So it would be interesting to check out. If you're interested, hit, hit up my site. You can find out that and other readings and all kinds of good stuff. All right, next we're going to move on to the sign of Taurus. Okay, Taurus. This is going to be for Taurus sun sign, Taurus rising. Anybody who has, you know, Taurus, if you feel like you can identify with that energy in any way or you're watching for somebody else, then this reading could be for you. All right, let's get some shuffle going for Taurus uh, for the month of August of 2024. And get three cards, one, two, three, from the Rock and Roll Tarot. We've got the Knight of Swords, Air Sign Energy, Nine of Swords, Upset, and the Emperor. Okay. Now we're going to do the Songs for the Journey Home. Below, let's get these little straightened out a little better. There we go. Pretty. Make it pretty. Make it pretty, make it pretty. This one wants to fly out, and it is the King of Earth Songs, King of Pentacles. Okay. I usually cut, but it seems like I want to do it this way. Second card is the Seven of Wave Songs, which is Cups, Seven of Cups. Okay, and I want to grab this one. Death card. Now, don't freak out over the death card. Death card is not necessarily a death. I mean, it rarely is a death, honestly. It's just a big change. It's something that you're wanting to let go of. And if, if it's bringing you the Nine of Swords energy, then by all means, of course you want to let go of it. Okay, air sign energy, Aquarius, Gemini, or Libra. Now, there's a couple things that this could be representing. Well, it could be representing a person with that sign, sun, moon, or rising. But also, it could be talking about this Mercury stuff, because Mercury is ruler of air and Gemini and stuff like that. It's something over the retrograde. The other thing that's the strongest pull for me, especially because you have the nine here, you've got a, um, then you have an ace, I guess not, but that nine is grabbing me, and on the 19th, Full moon in Aquarius. We do have an astrology event in the air sign in the full moon in Aquarius. So any these could be timing factors. It could be a person. It really feels for a lot of people this is somebody who's gone from your life and you're upset about it, you know. And he looks so angry. I feel like harsh words may have been spoken, like there may have been some angry words. That, when I said angry words, I heard angry birds. So I don't know. If, I know that's a game, but I don't know if it has any meaning to anybody out there. Um... You know, angry words could have been spoken, or I feel like they may have said something kind of hurtful to you, because you're over here at Nine of Swords. In some cases, you may have to go to the Emperor. Like, if this was a workplace thing, you may have to go to, like, Human Services and say, hey, man, this guy was just way out of line, or something like that. And in some people, too, it might be, like, going to whoever, you know, taking it, calling the cops, going to court. I mean, I don't, that's not going to be for everybody. But death here, this is going to end. This is coming to an end, and that's a good thing, okay? The other thing that you've got moving in this direction is you. This is your one of the card for you, the king of um, earth songs. No gender, so the king of uh, coins or, you know, uh, pentacles. And, you know, this one totally is you because you guys have many times your food. Look at he's got all this big feast laid out and everything like that. You know, some of you may be thinking about that with this person. Like, man, I thought we were, we were so good, and we had those great dinners together, and... You know, we like the same food or whatever it might be, you know. Um, as some of you don't go that if this is, this could be too, like drowning your sorrows and, and eating, overeating. We don't want to do that either. But to me, it feels more, not gluttony, it feels more like celebration. Um, that's moving out of the past, but it's it's not forever. You never. It's not like you'll never feast again or you'll never have somebody to hang with and, and go to restaurants or whatever this is all about here. Seven of Cups is visualizing your reality, and it's interesting that it does line up with this Nine of Swords. So, 
you want to be careful, you know, I mean, we, we need to grieve. We all need to grieve. We all need to feel our pain and whatever. But you don't want to hang in there too long or you're going to get tangled. I like the way this is depicted as a net. You know, you could get tangled up in this net. What am I hearing? Tangled up in blue. <sighs> tangled up in blue. I'm, I'm singing it in a much higher key than it is. It's a, it's a guy. I think it might be Dylan. You don't want to get too tangled up in this, you know, because, and then, you know, look at the, even on here, this cup is like upside down and coming out. All, all your joy is being drained and run away. Don't let that, your joy be drained. Don't let that creative flow be drained here. Mercury retrograde too, you might be thinking about somebody. You might be thinking about somebody from the past or something. Some of you, you're going to see something online. You're going to see a picture of them with their new partner or something like that. And it might be a little bit upsetting. But that's just the universe coming in and saying, listen, it's time to really let this, this thing go. And get back to being you and loving yourself and celebrating you. And, and again, in some cases, there may be, you may have to go for this intervention. Okay, let's go ahead and get you lots of love. Oh, Animal Totem, I almost forgot. Sorry, Animal Totem for Taurus. If this doesn't resonate, check your sun rising and moon. You know, every reading is not going to resonate with everybody. Okay, so, uh, Taurus. The Ladybug, see, that's luck. Ladybug is good luck and good fortune, and it's a very positive card. Lucky Lady of the Garden, Harbringer of Happiness and Joy. Rid my life of obstacles that are destructive to my divine right to flourish. That last line is so perfect. Rid my life of obstacles that are destructive to, of my divine right to flourish. I mean, I think that just says it all. You know, that just says it all. You got this red, and the red is really grabbing me. I mean, that's the Kundalini chakra. So if it was a sexual relationship, you may just be missing the physical, sexual part of it. Um, but I want to say it's blood. So for some of you, maybe this is even a family or relative or somebody, your blood, you know, somebody that you're related to. And for others, um, that blood is something else, but I was kind of lost it. I had another idea of what that blood might be. But I, um, you know, maybe you feel like you've been cut and you're bleeding. You're bleeding, your heart is bleeding. I mean, I don't know. But the ladybug is awesome, really good energy. Okay, let's get your... Uh, Lots of love. It says lovers. So, yeah, I kind of feel like for a lot of you, this was a lover. And, you know, that red kundalini, that could be you're dismissing the physical sex of it, you know. Go get a massage. I mean, do something where, you know, if you need to be touched, you need to be touched. <laughs> you know, and Taurus says you are. You are very physical. You know, that's, that's a big part of your, your makeup here. It says unknown at this time. Somebody else got the same, like it was unknown or it was unsure. That's what they had. Okay, finally, lots of answer or lots of proverbs for Taurus. It says, don't look a gift horse in the mouth. Well, you know, there's something good coming your way. I think that might be referring over here to this ladybug. You know, there's something really good coming your way. And, you know, don't poo-poo it, like, oh, it has to be them or nothing. No, no, no. Let's not, it doesn't have to be them or nothing. You've got, you know, you've got a couple major arcana here, and the Death card and the Emperor. So this is stuff, these are higher forces are at work at this time, and things are changing. Mercury's retrograde, so some things can, might seem sort of convoluted also. You may not... You may not be seeing the picture clearly, you know. Um, look for the bright side. Look for the, the ladybug. Look for the joy. Go in that direction. The jewels, they're saying. The jewels and the gems. Maybe it's a red stone. Maybe you need to work with like a bloodstone or a ruby or something like that. You can, I mean, in rubies, you think they're expensive, but they're really not. And you can get those natural rubies, which are really cool. And they're pink and different colors and stuff. Um, you can get them at a very reasonable price. All right, next let's move on to the sign of Gemini. Well, Gemini, you know, your Mercury is your ruler, and we're going to have the Mercury retrograde. So you, more than anybody, I think, really feels these Mercury retrogrades. If you didn't watch the intro, of course, it's going to be on the 5th, and then it's going to go direct on the 28th. But, I mean, it's, it's you know, it stops. It's not like, oh, it goes direct. It, stand, it, goes, it stops going backwards from our perspective. It's, it's a station. It makes a station, so it's just stopped. So it's not like, oh, the 28th, everything's moving forward. Now, you may feel a little bit 
you know, just things are not quite going as quickly as you would want or something along those lines. So, okay, let's get three cards out for our Geminis for the month of August. One, two, three. I said one, two, three. What is that? Is that like some polka thing, isn't it? All right, all right, let's see here. <laughs> Got the Knight of Cups, the Nine of Swords, I mean, Nine of Rods, and the Page of Pentacles. Okay, now we're going to get three cards from the Songs for the Journey Home. Oh, this one flew out, and it is the Knight of Wave Songs, which is the Knight of Cups twice. Knight of Cups twice. Okay, next. Uh, I guess I'm just, just I want to cut them, but it seems like they just want to do it this way. The Six of Coins, Six of Pentacles, getting paid. Getting paid over here, too. All right. Gem. I got the star coming in. Nice, nice, nice energy with the star coming in. Well, you know, we got the, the Knight of Cups twice. So we're looking at some water sign energy. Water signs are, you know, Scorpio, Cancer, Pisces. Um, you could be dealing with a person who is a water sign, a Scorpio, Cancer, Pisces. But you could also be um, dealing with something emotional. You know, the water energy, this talks about emotional stuff, things that you have a uh, emotional connection to, an emotional relationship, uh, you know, things like this. Somebody may be kind of, you know, moving out of your life. Uh, and I don't know that it's a bad thing. For some of you, I feel like it, well, it's August, you know, so the end of August, kids are going back to school, right? So it could be like, um, you know, your, your kid's going back to college or going away to school or something like that, or your boyfriend or whoever, your partner, your lover is going away. Um, I get a feel. this is looking at them like you don't trust them. And I feel like they are trustworthy. Let's put, let's get that out there. I feel like they are trustworthy. I feel like whatever they're offering you, you don't have to be so on guard about it. I mean, be on guard to it, especially Mercury retrograde, especially if it's like some kind of things that you got to commit to. Yeah, you want to look it over, check it twice, you know, dot, dot, dot the I's and cross those T's and everything. But, um, this, I don't, I feel like if there's any apprehension toward the uh, Knight of Cups, I feel like it's unfounded, really, you know. Knight of Cups is a very positive energy. But the way I, it's moving out of your life now, so they might be going away. Maybe they're going away for a trip. Maybe they're going away f to school. Maybe they're moving to a new job. This could be a job thing. Maybe you're leaving the job because you definitely have money coming in here. News about money around earth energy. Now we don't have a big new moon or full moon in earth, but uh, on the 22nd, your ruling planet of Mercury is going to move back into Virgo which is earth energy, okay? Oh, I mean, it is Virgo. The sun moves into Virgo. That's what I was trying to say. And Mercury goes retrograde in Virgo, but the 22nd is what was grabbing me. The sun moves into Virgo. So we could be looking at the, around the 22nd, really, is the strongest thing uh, as far as that goes. There could be, you know, talks, things going on leading up to it. Some of you are going to change your residence, too. You might be looking at a house or something. You, the Six of Pentacles, so you're going to get the money. If this could also be... Maybe this person is going to get some kind of a scholarship or um, some kind of student loan. or I, A lot of it feels surrounded uh, around housing or something, too. So maybe it's something where they're going to get a great deal and, and get housing on campus. Or if you're trying to move, maybe you're going to find that perfect place. And um, it could even be some, some kind of subsidized thing, you know, with the Six of Pentacles, whether it's for a student or even for yourself. If you're over a certain age, sometimes... They have apartments or you know communities where you get some kind of subsid subsidized whatever. Um, the word subsidized really wants to come through. So your income could be subsidized through you know diff a lot of different things. I love that the star is the last card over here, and the star energy is still like coming in. So the star is always this beautiful representation of your spirit guides, your angels. They, they're looking over you, they're coming from a higher dimension, they can see so much more than we can see here on Earth. It was something like that, right? But I wanted to point out this road here is really standing out to me, and I feel like they're showing you the road, you know, they're showing you, they're, they're, they're lighting the way for you to, you know, go down this path that you're, is, is opening up for you. But it also, you know, sometimes it can be, like, you could be a star. Maybe you're going to get that money. Maybe that's some kind of a competition, even, where you're, you're vying for an endorsement, or you're vying for a, 
you know, some kind of a grant or something like that. And, um, you know, you, you're going to be a star. You're going to be a standout, you know. All right, let's get the animal totem for our Gemini friends. Let's see what we have here. Got the armadillo. This one hardly ever comes out. I hardly ever see this card. Okay, armadillo, self-protection, shielding, retreat, dig deep, connect to the subconscious. That could be the Knight of Cups too, the subconscious for sure. Fill your lungs with good fresh air to aid in the buoyancy of your plans. Well, you know, the other thing that protection and shielding is always what I get there, you know. And because he has that armor on him, you know, kind of the armadillo. I do feel like, um, you know, not this kind of, not this is almost like being too much, like almost being paranoid. But I do feel like with the star here, I feel like, you know, it's telling you that you are protected. Or well, that white stripe is too much in there, huh? I need to mellow that down. I always wanted to go back and fix these up a little better. They need an overhaul, but yeah, that white stripe looks weird. Anyways, uh... <laughs> It feels like the star energy is, uh, you know, that's your shielding. Like you have this protective barrier that's coming from a higher spiritual source or something along those lines. So pretty cool. All right, let's get your um, lots of love for August for Gemini. Lots of love. What do we got here? We've got action. Well, I mean, action, okay, but... Mercury retrograde, especially for Geminis. I mean, I'm not one that my whole life shuts down because of Mercury retrograde. And I've had all kinds of things, like my brother bought this car years ago, and I, I was telling him, ooga booga, you know, oh, it's Mercury retrograde, you shouldn't have bought that car. He's like, I don't believe in any of that stuff, you know. <laughs> and that car outlived him. I mean, it did. It lasted a long, long time. Um, so it was. It ended up being a good card, but but it, it, it's like the state of mind. He was like, I don't believe in that stuff, so it didn't affect him. So, you know, you got to take that into account. But let's see here. Next we have doubtful. You know, with that action though, too. Another thing that I'm picking up on that it could be some of you. It could be like action, like a movie, the clapper. You know, doing. You maybe you're going to be shooting in a movie or a commercial or, you know, a YouTube video. Who knows what? You know, something along those lines. Okay, next, we've got better safe than sorry. So that, that goes back to this. So, I mean, maybe there is something that you're, you're feeling, but I feel like as far as this person goes, you're being overly, might be being a little bit overly. I feel like their intentions are good. With, I'm just a boy whose intentions are good. Oh, Lord, please don't let me be misunderstood. <laughs> Yeah, they could be just under, misunderstood, you know. All right, so that's the reading. Hey, if you want to get in on that uh, Eclipse readings, check it out. Um, it'll be available for a limited time. You can find everything on my website or any of the different readings that I do offer. If you like this format and you like more of the general readings, I have more on, on Patreon for only $5.55 a month. You can get a re reading every week. Oh, this one flew out. Might be for you, might be for the next sign, but we're going to put it back in the deck. Anyways, next we're going to move on to the sign of Cancer. All right, Cancers, well, yeah, we're moving out of your energy. There was a lot of energy in you. We had all this, the solstice, and the new moon, and we had all kinds of big stuff happening last month. So now it's, you know, it's moving on, we're moving into Leo. We are in Leo, and we're going to be moving into Virgo. So, you know, it's the emphasis isn't so much on you anymore, which, you know, might be a good thing. Sometimes when all the planets are hitting you, it can be a little bit, a lot. Okay, Wheel of Fortune, nice. Next we have Chariot, wow, Two, double nice. That's also your card, by the way, your Major Arcana card. And then the Eight of Swords, so let's get our three cards from the Songs for the Journey Home. For Cancer, Sun sign, Rising sign, Moon, anybody who uh, you know has that energy, whether you might even just relate to it. I mean, you could have Sun in the fourth if you want to go deep. Everybody's now I'm seeing they're adding on Mars. It's just like, well, why don't you just name the whole thing off? You know, <laughs> why don't you just name every dang planet off that there is in there? But you know, if you if you wanted to go. Um, the, uh, I wouldn't, I wouldn't, I mean, maybe if you want to, you could, but I don't look at Venus, Mars, I don't see how any way that that would be applicable. Honestly, that's so they, you'll watch more of their videos, that's what they're doing. <laughs> but, 
if you want to get a little deeper on that, you can say if you have sun in the fourth house, then you might want to watch Cancer. See, if you have this sun in the different houses, they could affect you. You have that flavor. So if you have sun in the first house, you might want to watch Aries. Sun in the second house, you might want to watch Taurus, and so on and so on and so on and so on. That's another little way that could be relevant, okay? Uh, but the rest of it, I'm not so sure. But whatever. If you want to watch it, watch them all. A lot of times I'll do that. If I'm watching another reader, I'll just turn it on and watch all of them. See, you know, <laughs> see if... I don't always, but they could, sometimes it'll run into my... It, mostly I watch astrologers. But sometimes, you know how YouTube just starts the next video without your asking it to. So, it, and then I'll start, I'll hear somebody's doing it. Or maybe I'm cleaning or I can't get to the remote to change it or whatever. And I'll just be running on and I'll just listen to all of them. But anyways, this is for Cancer for August. Three cards. Okay, we've got the Ten of Swords. Okay, Ten of Wind Songs. The sun, nice. And the last one is the Knight of Earth Sun. So the Knight of Pentacles is coming in. The Ten of Swords is waning, but I mean, some of you may have really been through the ringer here. Maybe what, like I was picking up with all that energy in the, um, you know, in the last month or so, we've spent a lot of energy in your sign. So this is that butterfly caught in spider's web. So you may feel like you've gotten tangled up into something that, uh, you know, and this is feels that way too, like she's tangled up, you know, you might feel like a card get trapped or trapped in the web or trapped, but it's in reality, things are really shifting for the better. I mean, you've got three major arcana, you've got six cards here and three of them are major arcana and they're good ones too. I mean, you've got wheel of fortune in the upright position. This is fate, destiny. This is things lining up, clicking into place, everything happening for the reason. The wheel is going up, so things are turning in your favor. Chariot is the highest success card in the entire deck. And it's your card too. The sun card is below. The sun is just slightly askew. It's sort of coming into, into play here. But the sun card also just beautiful, beautiful energy. One of the most positive cards in the deck, exuding joy and happiness, glowing, sending out all these great vibes. Sun is also the ruler of Leo too. So there's that energy of the, of the Leo coming into play. Um, Knight of Earth Song. So this is a, a earth sign person who's coming into play. They're descending down that big staircase there. Look at that. Look at that big staircase. Is that from a spaceship or what? Or it's like, ta-da! <laughs> it's like making their debut or something. I don't know. Something about it reminds me of that. Like of those old movies where they'd walk down the big staircase, you know? <laughs> also, I'm seeing a letter D here. So for some of you, there could be, you know, somebody with uh, the initial D. You see, you can see that D. Yeah, so there could be some letter D initial for some people out there. Uh, rolling out the red carpet, the sun is shining. I mean, there's opportunity. You, whatever you got tangled up in or whatever you felt went wrong here, it was only to get you to move on to the next phase. This is the sun is coming in. The wheel is always ever turning. And so things are lining up to be so positive for you right now, Cancer. And this guy, you know, he just looks like he's... He's like in the spotlight to me. So I've, I'm getting that feeling, especially with the being right next to the sun, like the sun is shining on you. Also, this could be because it is earth sign, all right? And this could be as we move into the sign of earth, which is gonna be on that 22nd. So it could be something around that 22nd that really starts to kick in for you and everything looks shiny and bright again, rosy and bright, they're saying. All right, let's get your animal totem for our Cancers for the month of August of 2024. Cancer, we got the grasshopper. See, things can change in an instance. It's interesting, too, that the sun is in the same spread with the grasshopper because the reason that the grasshopper leaps from leaf to leaf to leaf or grass to grass or whatever he's doing is because he always wants to be in the sun. He always wants to be basking in the sun, and he leaps to where he can feel the warmth of that sun, where he feels warm. That's important to you too, Cancers. You guys need to feel warmth and love and, and you know nurtured and stuff. So it could be out like that too, but also like making that leap to show where, where you can be seen, where you're not hi tangled up or hiding or whatever's going on here. All right, let's read this. Health, blessing, fertility, 
the gift of song. My dog's crying. I don't know if you could hear him. I locked him out of the room. How about I let him in after this reading? <laughs> Inspired creations reveals your true spirit. Reincarnation, discovering your soul path. Advancement by leaps and bounds. Yeah, that's the main uh, meaning that I usually attach to the, uh, to the to the grasshopper is that advancement by leaps and bounds. Okay, let's get you lots of love for all our cancer friends out there. We've got a cheater. I don't know somebody you might have gotten locked in. A, a, you know, oh what a tangled web we weave when first we practice to deceive, right? You may have been, maybe they were cheating on you, or maybe you got involved with somebody who's cheating on his partner or their partner, and you didn't even know it. You know, that's happened to me before. And every time that's ever happened, it's like, I'm done with you. We're done. I'm not going to be a part of this. And here's a, here's a little factoid that I know from all my years in the bar. If they cheated on her, they're going to cheat on you too. Believe you me. All right, next one. Uh, we've got... Plainly. So that's a big yes. And then finally, let's find that. Lots of proverbs for our cancer friends. It says, make love, not war. Yeah, that's always a great uh, great plan anyway, right? A great, a great advice anyway. Yeah, make love, not war. I don't see you being war-like. I mean, if anything, it's sort of like war upon yourself. Celebrate you. This guy, this person is celebrating themselves. They are not uh, crying or doing any of this stuff, you know. They're like, here I am. Here I am. Rock, rock you like a hurricane, baby. Yeah, so coming down that staircase, sh showing the world, here I am, living your best life shining on you, triumph and victory, rise, phoenix rising from the ashes, we're coming out of this area of feeling, you know, tangled up and, you know, it feels like you got, uh, I'm hearing, victim of love, I see a broken heart, well, I could be wrong, but I'm not, I'm a little bit off on that, so victim of love, yeah, some of you got caught in some kind of crazy thing here, and don't cry about it. Celebrate you, you know. You rise above that. You you don't have to be rolling around in the mud with the swine here, you know. And and anybody that's going to be doing that, that just has bad energy. It just has bad energy. It's a low, very low vibration, okay. And you deserve better than that, okay, Cancers. All right, hey, if you want to get in on that uh, eclipse reading, that's going to be available for a limited time. You can head over to my website and check it out or the different other readings that I do have available. You can find that all on my website. Remember you are love and beauty incarnate, Cancers. And next we're going to move on to the sign of Leo. Well, Leo, happy birthday, Leo. It's your season. It's your time. It's your new moon. And Mercury's retrograde. Wah, wah, wah. <laughs> I'm just playing with you. No, but it is your sign regardless. I mean, that new moon, your solar return, the new moon is on the 4th if you skip the intro. The new moon in Leo, you get one new moon and one full moon a year. So this is your one new moon. It's the most powerful time to manifest your reality. You know, make your list of what you're wanting to create. Make your wishes. This is your personal new year. Forget about January 1st. It's pretty much irrelevant unless you're born around that time or you have ascended around that time. Your solar return, which is your birthday, when the sun returns back to its place of origin of your birth, that's when things are cooking. That's what my guy said. <laughs> that's, when, that's when you've got that most powerful mojo, okay? Let's get here. Three cards. We've got the Three of Pentacles, followed by the Ten of Cups. Beautiful. Followed by the Sun card. Wow. Wow, wow, wow. You have a nice beginning to this, uh, I was gonna, I almost said beginning to this relationship, so some of you might be getting, beginning a new relationship. If that's the case, it certainly is a nice beginning, but let's, let's get the rest of the cards and then we'll dive in a little deeper. What are the three cards for Leo, Sun, Moon, Rising, anybody who has placements in Leo or, you know, if you think it's relevant. As I said earlier, we could go on forever. We can do Venus, Mars, Saturn, Jupiter, you know, you know, if you resonate with the Leo energy in any way, this is for you. <laughs> one, two, three. Here we go. And it's one, two, three. Page of flame songs. Page of rods. That could be your energy at, a, at an earlier time in life. Page of earth songs. We got. Look at these two children on here, baby. We got children on here. 
Looking at some children and then the devil. The devil you know, I just heard. <laughs> well, we've definitely got some children action here. So, so it could be all kinds of things. Maybe it's if it's not you, maybe it's your neighbor, your sister, your, you know, maybe you're going to be a grand, these are grandkids, whatever the case may be. But there's definitely an energy of youth. Now, this one particular, the flame songs, that could really be you. This could be something you when you were a child. I don't know why they put this as the Ace of Wands, because I mean, the, the Page of Wands looks so depressed, doesn't it? They look depressed, and I don't think of the Page of Wands that way, because the Page of Wands is all fired up and raring to go, you know. And this one, you can't even see him. He's climbing in the tree there. He's all tangled up in the weeds and stuff like that. Um, this could be, some of you, this might be some old childhood friend that you're going to meet again. And, and the Ten of Cups, maybe if it's romantic, if it's like the one that got away or whatever, then maybe you'll get back together. But it just might be the happiness and joy of catching up with them because they are like family. You know, this Ten of Cups is definitely a card of, of family. Um, if any of you are trying to get pregnant, wow, I mean, this is definitely conducive for that. I mean, the sun card has the baby on it. We've got the children here. We've got the children there. Devil is moving out of the, the spectrum here. And the devil is this thing that you are in bondage to. Or it could be, um, some of you, I mean, if it's a divorce, it sure looks happy, though. But some of you, maybe, maybe it's somebody else who, and they're going to divorce, and you guys can finally be together. It could be like that, I mean, even. I mean, I'm not going to say that for sure for everybody, but that could be a possibility. The devil is this releasing from bondage, releasing to what was holding you down and holding you back, the chaos. You know, in this card in particular, it really looks sort of chaotic, doesn't it? So it's going out of, it's going waning, it's going away. These are all very much present in the present moment here. So, to having to do with children, maybe some of, because this is also school, maybe the kids are going back to school and you're, you're happy. It's like, get these kids out of my hair. You know, you're happy to have them not being tangled up in the trees and messing around and doing all this stuff. Um, some of you, maybe you're getting a gig like that. Maybe you're going to get a job working for, I just heard uh, marriage and family counseling. So somebody's going to be getting some kind of, or maybe you're starting school or training for that for somebody. Um, so it could be like that, but maybe you're going to be working at school, working with the children, you know, something like that. Uh, but whatever it is, whatever you're working on, take the kids out of the equation for a minute, because I know not everybody relates to that. But this Ten of Cups is just like, wow. I mean, we are just so happy over the moon. And then when you pair it with the uh, Sun card, talk about happiness, joy. And another thing, Leo, is the Sun card, that's your representation. You are ruled by the Sun card. So you're ruled by the Sun card. So this is a beautiful energy of love, bliss, happiness. Many people are going to be maybe getting married or having a children. Somebody's going to a christening. You know, so there's different things going on. But this is a, it's a time of learning and growing, but it's also a time of great joy and happiness. And whatever's been holding you back, it seems to be moving out of the, out of the situation. All right, let's get our animal totem card for our Leos for August. We've got the beaver. So you're building something. The beavers are building. Some of you might be building a house. Maybe there's, you know, your old house has trees and vines all over it like mine does. <laughs> you're, you know, you're building, you're building an addition or something like that. But maybe you're just building a life with somebody. You definitely, that's a huge possibility. And this is building too. Can we see build on there also? Builder, dreamer, familiar, friend, dweller of land and water, afoot in two worlds. Your diligence can change the flow of the river. Be the architect of your life. Yeah, well, this is the time to be the, uh, they're giving me that. It's the time of the season. <laughs> can you take a... <laughs> yeah, but, you know, this is the time to do it because of all this energy. Build a, you're creating a reality big time. So don't be all moping in the corner, you know, looking out the window, oh, woe is me. Psh, that's not you anyway, Leo. You, Leo, you're so, you're so gregarious and fun and everything. Let's see what we got here. User. So some of you have been in a situation where you felt like you were a user. That's probably what this devil is you're breaking free from. Okay, next let's get our lots of answer. 
somebody you, are you some of you are leaving a relationship with this devil and you're just like I feel great I feel like a kid again okay let's see positive I'm hearing it's the end of the world as we know it and I feel fine <laughs> well it's the end of the world some of you it is the end of the world as you know it but that's not a bad thing okay last but not least lots of proverb be yourself because everyone else is taken yeah be yourself you know shine your light be yourself a lot of joy and happiness either kids around maybe connecting with old childhood friends or something this thing in the tree somebody you used to climb trees with or something like that that's coming through pretty strong there leo well it is again i want to wish you a wonderful happy birthday solar return don't forget to do your manifestation start making your list now and then on that, your birthday is a great time, but also that new moon. This is a, your very powerful new moon to create your reality for the upcoming year and beyond. If you enjoy this, my readings, I do have a weekly version of this sort of on Patreon for only $5 a month. You can get all three, all week, I mean, every week you get a new reading. And I also have the Eclipse readings if you're interested in that. All that information can be found in the links below this video description or by visiting my website. Have a great solar return, Leo. And next we're going to move on to the sign of Virgo. Hello, Virgo. This is going to be your reading for August. And happy birthday to all you late August uh, Virgos out there. If you're having a... Uh, Mercury is going to go retrograde in your sign. Now, you are also ruled by Mercury. Uh, the Virgos are ruled by Mercury, too. So you're going to feel it. You could feel it pretty strong because it's your ruling planet and it's going retrograde. But not only that, it's going retrograde in your sign. So things may feel a little stall or delayed. But, you're, you know, Virgo, you're a, you're a planner. You like to plan. This is a good time to do some planning. But anyways, like I was saying, your solar return, which is your birthday, that is your most powerful time for manifesting reality, creating the life that you want for the upcoming year and beyond. Um, the sun is going to move into your sign after the 22nd. So even if, you're, um, even if your birthday is not around that time, the end of August, this is still going to be, we're moving into Virgo season, so we're moving into your power time, okay? Um, and then Mercury is going to go direct on the 28th, but then it's going to take a minute to get back into your sign, I think. I don't know why I'm going to do this one first. I usually do the other ways first. Ten of Swords. Somebody else had that in that exact same spot, too. And the Sun. I think they had that, too. Well, the Sun's been out before, and it's been in that spot. And then, finally, the Eight of Cups. Eight of Wave Songs. Okay. Let's cut three cards from the Rock and Roll Tarot. We've got the Moon card. Well, the Sun and Moon together. We'll, we'll talk about that in a minute. Hierophant. And last card for you is Ten of Cups. That was also out recently. Well, you have some nice cards. I mean, with the Sun and the Ten of Cups, that's some beautiful energy. Here's another thing. You've got two Tens. You've got the Ten of Swords and the Ten of Cups, which are really like polar opposites because the Ten of Swords is just like, oh, you know, I'm just, I feel like I'm defeated. And, you know, this the way they depict it here, it's the butterfly and the spider's about to get him. It's caught in that web. Um... But then it follows up right with the Sun card. And when you get the Sun and you get the Marriage card, the Ten of Cups together, I mean, that's some beautiful energy. Um, you're walking away from something here, though, with this Eight of Cups. You know, you're walking away from something. You've had enough. It's interesting to me, too, that this sliver of this moon is on there, too, if you notice that. That moon is in a real prominent thing. So whenever you get Sun and Moon together, it's one of two things. Well, it could be a sun square moon, but mostly when the sun and moon come together, that's the new moon. And then when the sun and moon are opposing each other, that's the full moon. So those are, could be important dates for you this month here. We're going to have the new moon in Leo on the 4th, and then we're going to have the full moon in Aquarius on the 19th. So that, that could, and this is card 19, okay. This is card 19, the sun. So definitely that one could be very, very strong. The moon, you know, taking the sun and moon as luminaries and just, and, uh, you know, reading it as a, a, a general reading, w the moon card is also about having that very strong intuition. You've got this intuition. You've got a connection with somebody, Ten of Cups over here. You've got, this is one of those uh, connections where you can really feel their energy. Like you could, you might be having dreams about them or 
you might, you know, it's one of those things when you, you could just think about them and then they'll call you or text you or something. Like you can, you have this unspoken, this nonverbal kind of flow and communication going on and that's definitely very strong. The Hierophant, so this is somebody within a group. This could be somebody that you, you might just be aligning with a group that you just really like find your soul tribe here. For some people, that's what this could be, and there's a lot of happiness and joy around it. For others, you might be attending an actual wedding, and this could be, you know, the group of, maybe it's your religion, or maybe it's your extended family, or different people and different things that you haven't seen, you know, in a long time. Uh, the Sun card is here, and so that's just like the joy, the happiness, the... Uh, you know, the shining, the glowing, the joy of it all, and you're just over the moon and over the top um, in your happiness and joy uh, with whatever this is. These, these are both very much happiness and joy. You're not going to be sticking around for things that just aren't, you know, you're, you're just, you're not going to do that anymore, it feels like. And for some of you, it may have been a really kind of a hard journey or a hard lesson to learn that you're going to ha you have to move on to the next thing. You know, you're going to have to move on to the next thing that there's this, you can go no further here. And it's time to move on to the next thing. But the next thing is full of beauty. They're, the guides are saying the next thing is full of hope and promise. So it's very, very favorable. I mean, you've got some wonderful, wonderful cards here. There's definitely opportunities for much joy and much happiness um, coming up for you this month. Some things are coming to an end, but if it's been suffering and you feel trapped, then... That's, that's not a bad thing that is coming to an end, right? Okay, let me go ahead and get your animal tone for our Virgos. Got the turtle. Turtle is all about really like stability. Uh, turtle has that hard shell, but turtles, you know, this is for the long term also, especially like this, whatever you're heading towards, because turtles live hundreds of years. They have a very long lifespan. But it's very they're very rock solid and steady, you know, slow and steady wins the race. That's the you know, it's earth. Whatever you're heading towards, and your earth also, you know, whatever you're heading towards, this is gonna give you that real solid thing. You know, with this journey cards here and the and the turtle, because the turtle has his home on his back. I mean, some of you maybe you're gonna get one of those Winnebagos or whatever and drive around, you know, and, and do that. But some of you you might just be moving. There's definitely an energy of traveling here. Okay, so it's ancient remnant of a bygone era. Knowledge of the ancestors. Yeah, some of you might be getting together or some big family reunion or get together. Deliberate, slow, and steady movement. Yeah. So it's very favorable. You're, you're done with whatever. There's something you're absolutely done with. But what awaits you is just really beautiful energy. Okay, let's go ahead and get the lots of love for our Virgos. It's got frenemy. Yeah, be, be wary. That might be the web you're caught in, in a frenemy. So, especially with Mercury retrograde in your sign and your, your ruler, you know, watch what you say to people. And the moon can be like that, too. The moon can be gossip or telling lies and stuff like that, too. So just watch what you say to people. Or you may be, well, might finally realize that some people that you thought you could trust that maybe you shouldn't. So just be careful who you talk to and what you say. It says plausible. And then lastly, we're going to get your lots of Proverbs for Virgo. We've got a stitch in time saves nine. Well, if that isn't a Virgo thing, I don't know what is. <laughs> that basically means do it right the first time. You know, do it right the first time. Make sure, you know, check it once, check it twice, especially during Mercury retrograde. You know, check things over. Make sure it's, it's going well and you got it right. And, you know... It, it'll be long, in the long run, and turtles are slow and deliberate too. You know, take your time. Mercury's retrograding. Take your time. Make sure it's right. Check it once. Check it twice. But really, Ten of Cups, Sun card. I mean, this is some really nice, nice, beautiful energy. If there's an opportunity to get to, maybe it's a class reunion even, or some kind of like family reunion or something along those lines. You know, definitely, I, I would attend. You know, don't let work bog you down or whatever. It's gonna you're, once you. It's one of those. It feels like one of those things. that's just like, oh, it's such a pain in the butt to go travel and do all this stuff. But then once you get there, it's just like, oh yeah, this is cool. I'm glad I did it. You know, I think you'll be glad you did it. Wait a minute. Let's skip one here. It's Libra. Here we go. Next, we're gonna move on to the sign of Libra. All right, Libra. Well, this is gonna be for you, Libra, Sun, Rising, Moon. 
Uh, anybody who you know resonates with Libra energy on whatever level, if you're watching for somebody else or whatever, whatever the case may be, this reading could be for you. Okay. So, you know, you're another one. Eclipses aren't this month, but as far as that eclipse reading goes, you've been having the eclipses in your sign, and now they're going to be moving out of it. So you 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 could really maybe benefit from that. I mean, it's up to you as always, but you might want to check that out. All right, what's going on this month of August of 2024 for our Libra Sun Rising and Moon? Down here we've got one, two, three. We've got um, three of Wind Songs, three of Swords moving out. That's the Depression. Four of Wind Songs. You need that. You're going to need a time to recover, rest and recover. And then six of Fire, it kind of in reverse here. Let's get these three cards here. Um, Six of the fire lady looks crazy, doesn't she? I'm going to show you guys this closer up. <laughs> five of swords, four of cups, five of swords, and the tower. Wow. So some major shifting of energy. I mean, it's funny that I brought up the eclipses, too, because it, your time of being under the influence of the eclipses is coming to an end. And, you know, many of you have gone through some big, big shakeups. The other thing is, even if, though we're not having an eclipses in August, it's coming and starting in September, but... Still yet, the north, the south node, which is part of the whole thing, is traveling through your sign. So as a group, on a collective level, you know, you Libras are really cleansing a lot of, purging a lot of stuff, you know, karmically and heavy things and, and like that. So some of you have really been through, I mean, if this doesn't resonate with you, it's just, it's, it's, you know, it's not a totally happy reading, but you check your rising and moon. But this is how the cards came out, so this is how we're going to read them. But look, at maybe it's because she's upside down. Let's see what she looks like upright. And she still kind of looks a little crazy, doesn't she? <laughs> maybe some of you just had a run-in with some crazy, you know, kind of wild and crazy person. This way she really looks crazy. It's like, what is that? Like a banshee or something, I want to use the word. What in the world is that? So, you know, maybe some of you went through some, somebody's acting irrationally and crazy, and it, it hurt your feelings. And the thing is, it's not going to change, okay? It's not going to change, and it's pushing you, the tower is pushing you to make some kind of a big, you have to make the change. This situation, that person, this is irrational behavior, okay? Now, Six of Rods is really about victory and triumph. It's not really about that. But that face and that way she's got her waving her arms and everything's haywire, that's just really grabbing me. It feels like, and with the tower, it feels like you've been immersed in a lot of chaos. And Libras, you don't like to be immersed in a lot of chaos. You like to have your life in balance and harmony. And you like to have peace. You're ruled by Venus. You like to have peacefulness in your in your life, and, and this is not your jam at all, okay? So the tower says, you know, things are coming to an end, and you might be immersed in a lot of chaos, but there will be a healing time that follows, okay? There's going to be a healing time that follows. You're going to have, and no better time than during Mercury Retrograde, you might want to just step back and assess, you know, what it was all about, what happened, and... There's new ideas, spirit. This is clearing the way. All this stuff is clearing the way so that peaceful, beautiful energy of the Four of Cups can come in. Notice that this hand comes out of the cloud. So this is extending the spirit energy from the cloud, from the higher sources. Uh, they can't, your spirit guides can't reach you if you're, if you're doing this, okay? And you, you're, this feels like, I mean, this person just feels like, wow, I'm getting such a vibe off of it. Like, stalker, crazy, you know, somebody's just losing it all over. It's not you. It could be a fire sign. It could be a Leo, Aries, or Sagittarius. But it's really rocking your boat here. It's really upsetting the apple cart for you. And it's, you need a break from this no matter what. You need to get away from this no matter what. And you've got to get that balance. Get that, your boat, your oars back in your boat. They don't have all their oars in the boat or something they're saying. Um, they just want to start trouble. They, they want to keep it going. They want, like a, they want to hit the hornet's nest and keep, the, keep that energy going. And you know you don't you don't roll like that. You gotta find some peaceful place. And when this chaos is not in all around you, and you're in your peaceful place, 
then you can get the then you can see your next move the universe is trying to show you this is only coming to an end we're coming to the end of your eclipse cycle too so it's things will be coming to an end over the next couple months here okay libra uh, but then you won't have to deal with any of this till for 19 more years so <laughs> that's on the bright side i know this was kind of a wild reading so if you didn't resonate do check your rising or moon you know i'm just the messenger don't have to get all up in arms because it wasn't the best. I mean, it's not a terrible reading. It's just telling you that this person's not going to change and you need to get away from them. And this feels like, uh, you know, somebody who's constantly maybe talking, keep texting you, calling you, you know, putting, posting things on your social media, posting things about you on social media. It's that kind of energy. It's so chaotic. Okay. Let's get our uh, animal totem. The ox. Yeah, they're not going to go away. <laughs> they're not going to go away until you put your foot down and say, "Listen, you got to chill out. Enough's enough. Back off. You know, I need some time by myself. I got to get my head together. This is too much. Okay, you're you're going to have to be the one to say that because they're just going to do the running amok. That's what my guides are saying. They're just running amok. Okay, this ox, strength, endurance, patience, presence. Clearing of karma, and, yeah, clearing of karma, because that's a south note, and accepting what is. Standing strong, plowing through. Elimination, you're going to eliminate this, creates space for magic. Elimination creates space for magic. Yeah, that's the truth. And that's the truth. <laughs> that's old Edith Ann, for those of you that don't remember that uh, Lily Tomlin character. Okay, here we go. Beautiful. Yeah, you're beautiful. And, you know, you like to have that essence of beautiful energy and everything in your life, Libra. You're ruled by Venus. This chaos is not cool, you know. And it really does feel like it's this specific person. For some of you, it could be a kid. One of your kids is just going crazy. And then the other kids, you know, you don't have time to play with the other kids. They're, it's because it's always about this crazy kid over here, you know. That happens in families. Look at this. Or the other kids can't enjoy their kite flying because this one's always spazzing out over here, you know? Okay, let's get the next one here. This is uh, your lots of answer. So it's perhaps. So that's a perhaps. But you need a break from it, no matter who this person is. And I think you got the ox too can be like really setting some boundaries here. Okay, next. They're running amok. The guys keep saying they're running amok. <laughs> What goes around comes around. So, yeah, if it is some crazy ex-partner or soon-to-be, you know, like that, where things have just gotten out of hand or they're stalking you online or whatever's going on, you know, just you need to exit, put, remove yourself from the situation. That's the best thing here. Uh, if it's a kid, you might need to bring in help. You might need to bring in somebody who has like a more of a Taurus. So this could even be like a counselor or a, you know author an authoritative figure of some sort that they're going to listen to. Because if you're if they're not listening to you, well, then you got to or maybe you got to kind of fess up and just say, hey, knock it off. Enough's enough. Time out. Because <laughs> they just seem like they're Wah. it's just wild. What goes around comes around. So that would be more in the in the realm of this is a personal relationship or even a coworker who's just you know. Off the, whoever this is is off the hook, okay? It's not for you to fix or deal with. Just find your peaceful place, find your happy place, and what goes around comes around. Somebody else will, somebody else's problem, right? <laughs> There'll be somebody else's problem. <laughs> All right, Libras, like I said earlier, you know, those eclipse readings, you're really in the mix on that. If you want to check it out, it'll be available for a limited time. I have other stuff on my website. Check it out at vickyverley.com if you're interested. And uh, check, up, check your other signs, because that was kind of a crazy reading you had there. But anyways, let's go on to the sign of Scorpio. All right, Scorpio. Let's see here. So, Scorpio, sun, rise, and moon. Anybody with prominent Scorpio in their charts? What is up for Scorps in the sign of August? Now, if you're a Scorpio rising, a lot of stuff's in your 10th house. That new moon's in your 10th house. You know, that could have to do with career achievement. You know, you could really be making some bold moves or big strides, they're saying. You could be making some big strides in the uh, career arena, perhaps, if you are Scorpio rising. That one wanted to flip over. We're going to take a death card. 
Look at how it just turned on its own. Isn't that crazy? You see that? <laughs> well, these cards are real slippery. That happens. They do. You set them down and they do move. Or maybe it was the ghost. Who knows? Uh, seven of cups and four of wind songs. Okay. Next, let's get our three cards for the rock and roll tarot up top. Got the lovers. Yeah. Let's put this as hearts for the lovers. Next, uh, we've got the page of rods, fire energy. Well, we're in fire time. And chariot, big success when maybe traveling. Okay, so you got the death card. Something's coming to an end for sure, okay? And it's not a bad thing, though, again. Like, I think it was the last reading or somebody had that. It's not a bad thing. You are getting news in the time of fire that is so freaking cool and so freaking excellent over here with this chariot here. That is grabbing me so much. Now, we're going to be in Leo all the way through to the 22nd, but it could even be on this new moon in Leo over here on, on the 4th. Um, this is something that you put out there, and wow, is it well received. It's getting a great reception. So it might even be something, maybe you're posting something online or social media or even you know, YouTube or whatever, TikTok. It could be like something really taking off here with this chariot. Um, it could be you coming out of, if you've been kind of in a depression here, because this could be sort of, not depression, but sort of solitude. And then the death card, you know, maybe you went through some big changes in your life, and maybe you're just uncertain of what's, you know, which, which way is coming next, what's next. But the chariot says, you know what, I've got a new attitude. I got a new attitude. You know, you got a new lease on life. You've got a new attitude. You're, you're, you know, you're feeling, you know, you're feeling young again or something like that. For some of you, it could totally be that because you're in love, you know. Uh, it might be that you're falling in love and you just feel young again, you know, or something like that. Those boots are standing out to me, those moccasin boots. I used to have a pair. I might still have them somewhere. At one point, I dyed them black, though, for stage clothes because we had to wear a black outfit for stage clothes as Valkyrie. I was all, my outfit was I was onyx and I was all black, but they were like this. Those were the most cool, comfortable boots too. But you know, those were popular like in the '70s or so. So maybe it's even some for some of you. It might have been something from back, or maybe when you used to wear those kind of a boots if you had them too. They were popular. A lot of people had them. Yeah, I had them. And they had two stars. On, or it's funny I said stars. I think that they were two. Uh, buttons or whatever like metal buttons but they may have had stars on them I'm not sure but each one had like two stars on the side I keep saying two stars so it must be that maybe this is something about this like this two stars or something like this so I keep saying that two stars so two stars who meet in the light or something <laughs> Maybe you're both stars in your, your chosen profession or your chosen, you know, maybe you're both stars of something, you know, it could be like that. But yeah, this is wonderful, wonderful energy. For some of you, it may just be your partner's really supporting you or maybe it's something great happening for your partner that you're really in love with and you're behind them too because this lover's energy is definitely pulling in there. It could also be something really cool is happening and in the process, like through the, the assignment, the work, the job, the trip you meet somebody if you're single and looking but you know this whole body is so interesting how this whole bottom kind of has this sort of I keep wanting to say depressive but it is a little bit depressive it has sort of this you know this not doom and gloom but you know it has this a little bit of the, the shadow side is down here or a little bit it feels like lacking energy like drain I feel drained you know look at this guy he looks and he's just like I've had enough my cups are falling out, I've got to stop, and i got to rest, you know, <laughs> and death is some kind of big change. But up here is so bright, so it's, a, it's interesting. It's the dark and the light. Well, I mean, that's you, Scorpio. You're dark. That's you all day long. You're the dark and the light. Between the dark and the light, what song is that? Between the dark and the light. I can't find it. I'm hearing it, though. Something about between the dark and the light. Big, big, big success. You know, another thing I'm picking up real quick before we do the animal totem. Chariot, this could have been something that you started back in cancer time. So that would have been back in late June and July. And then all of a sudden you're getting the news in Leo that it's a go. That you were very well received, they keep saying. So you may have, if you turned in your resume or you submitted your, you know, portfolio or you submitted your business plan or whatever you did or even your architectural plans or something you were very well received they're saying okay 
let's see here. Between the dark and the light, they keep telling me that. Dragonfly, total magic, total magic energy, total healing energy. Dragonflies are so, so magical and they're ancient. They come there in other realms, they, they travel, they go to other dimensions. It's quite magical. Okay, inhabiting two worlds at once, air and water. I'm going to go... So we're going to touch back on that day and night day and night and I keep skidding between the dark and the light day and night multi-dimensional travelers bringing healing and light protectors of the realm lifting the veil of consciousness yeah I feel like you're going to really kind of see beyond this I think you know Scorpios you can go there I mean you could go to that dark place you can definitely do that so you may have been a little depressed but this whole thing about between the air and the water we're going to have an air full moon over here on the 19th. That's the air. And then we'll have a water full moon, which should be our next one. Let me just make a quick double check when I grab my astrology calendar. I have it right here. Because I think in September, yeah, we'll have a full moon in Pisces. So between, I want to say between this full moon and the full moon in Pisces, which will be on the 17th of September, that, that could be it. But it's so interesting, I keep getting between the dark, caught in between the dark and the light. It's some lyrics. I can't get it, I, I, I can't sing it, and I can't get it in my head all the way. But this is, says day and night, dark and light. You know, there's something to that. Um, so it may just be a leap like that, because chariot, you know, I mean, let me put it in between the dark and the light, because that's going to drive me nuts. I can hear it in my head, but I can't, I can't re replicate it in my voice for some reason. In between the dark and the light. Uh, what's one of these nights? Yeah, one of these nights by the eagles. Yeah, that's it. One of these nights, one of these crazy old nights. Swear I'm going to find you. In between the dark and the light. Come on right behind you. Swear I'm going to find you. Get your baby one more. One of these nights. Yeah. So one of these nights, there does feel like that. One of these nights, I feel like you're just ready to bust out and break break through with these two cards here. And it just feels like, you know, it's going to be, you're going to find the happiness that may have been lacking for some time, my guides are saying. You may have been caught in a little bit of a doom and gloom energy. That's, doom and gloom are strong words to use, you know. But you, you, get, you get the picture. You know what I'm saying, right? Okay, let's get our lots of love for Scorps says ho-ish <laughs> well you know maybe you were involved with somebody and they were kind of ho-ish if that's the case this could be somebody that would be the polar opposite because we keep getting day and night dark and the light this is the polar opposite of that so if your last person cheated on you and was ho-ish then they're not gonna this next one's not gonna be okay next we have truly so they're truly, they're true to you. Okay, that's finally the lots of proper for Scorpio. Make hay while the sun shines, yeah. So yeah, make hay while the sun shines. That's like get out there, get things done. When you have the opportunity, you got to grab it. That's what make hay while the sun shines. That's another meaning of that, you know. When the opportunity arises, reach out and grab it. But, I mean, Scorpios, you guys are pretty ambitious. I mean, that's not usually anything I would have to say to a Scorpio necessarily. And you're also, the guy just came through with, you're also very resilient, okay? You can come back, you do this all the time, death and rebirth. That's, your, that's you all day long, Scorpio. So you're very resilient. But it's like you have a new lease on life here. Like something is really sparking you. And I know the lovers, so if you're looking for a relationship, maybe that's it. But it, it feels more like it doesn't, it's not an outward thing. It's something within you that, you know, lights you up all of a sudden again. Okay? All right, Scorps. Well, thanks for showing up and hanging with me for your reading. Uh, check out the eclipse readings if you're interested. It's going to be powerful. It's a big shift in energy coming up here in this fall eclipses. And secondly, if you like this kind of thing, I do have uh, the Patreon Weekly, which is All Signs Weekly. And we go a little bit more into the astrology. It's so only $5, $5.55 a month. Um, other than that, you can head over to my website for all, all sorts of things. You can find readings, you can find art, and different all sorts of things. If you enjoy these readings, please do hit that like and subscribe button. I mean, there are people... I'm losing subscribers like crazy. I guess it's something that YouTube algorithm is doing. But, you know, if you think you're subscribed, double check and make sure you are subscribed. Because there's something going on. Who knows, you know? I guess. <laughs> 
but yeah, I would like to uh, reach as many people as possible. Okay, so next let's look on to the sign of Sagittarius. All right, Sagis, well, we got the Mercury retrograde, we got the new moon, the full moon. Nothing exactly right in your sign, but everybody's affected, right? Everybody's affected. You might be better off, you know, what's more compatible with you is the earlier in the month until the 22nd. You got the Leo energy, it's a nice fire trine. Later, as we move into Virgo, then we're looking at squares, you know, we're looking at squares. And sometimes squares can be difficult things to overcome. Okay, we've got the first card is the uh, strength, followed by the Four of Cups and followed by the Knight of the King of Pentacles, Earth Sign Energy, Money Guy, the Money Man, or the Money Person. Bottom three, we've got uh, the Moon, Waning Moon. So it could be the Waning Moon, literally. W wave Songs, that's the Three of Cups. And finally, the Four of... This one's been a lot, this Four of Swords, Healing. All right, so the Three of Cups... Well, let's look at the Waning Moon first. So the Waning Moon... This, this is like, these cards are, this is waning, coming in. I mean, this is uh, waxing and then waning. So when we go from the new, new, up to the new moon, the new moon starts the waxing period. It gets the full moon, which is on the 19th, and then it's waning. The waning moon also is something that is very powerful for releasing. Anything that you want to remove from your life, purge from your life, you want to do it like on the full moon or a day or two after during the waning moon in order to release so there's something you've been hanging on for a long time here you've been strength you've been waiting some of you are going to get some good news about some kind of a money or job opportunity some kind of thing uh, where you're going to get a job offer you're going to get a financial there's opportunities for financial gains uh, and this is also Leo too it's the eighth month of August and it's Leo too so but it also is like you've been waiting, 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 and then all of a sudden, you know, bam, things are happening. The emperor, it's funny I called him the emperor, but they're actually the king of pentacles. Now, there's no gender in these readings, so the king of pentacles could be anybody who could be an earth sign, which is a Taurus, a Virgo, or Capricorn, but also the king of pentacles is um, the money person you know they definitely they're the boss they're the owner of the company they're the tycoon you know um, and they're offering you something I feel like it's a job or an opportunity for many now you've got this uh, you, you've been in this healing time you've been in this waiting period uh, but also this three of cups this is a great three of cups and I keep hearing when I'm looking at this I keep hearing rub-a-dub-dub -dub, three men in a tub <laughs> even though it's three ladies in a tub but i mean some of you are going to go to some party and there's a hot tub for sure that's coming through for sure but the three of cups is reason to celebrate definitely reason to celebrate definitely i want to say by the time we move into virgo time because that's the earth energy right so the earth energy comes after the 22nd and that's the waning right after the waning moon also right we're talking about this waning moon over here right um that's you're going to have that you'll have the offer by then some of you might be trying to sell a house whatever's who's ever making you this offer of whatever the case may be uh but there, you're going to be lots of happiness and lots of celebration if you are invited to some kind of big party you should definitely attend especially if it's outside and there's flowers and stuff going on you might not end up in the hot tub <laughs> necessarily but you know you might have a, you totally will have like a good a good time you can have a blast okay all right, so get out there, have fun, celebrate. Don't be too worried about this. It looks like it's coming. Mercury's retrograde, so things could be delayed. Just hang in there. Might be until after Mercury goes direct, after the 28th. But I want to say, by the time we get up to here, you know. Well, you know what else? I think it's Labor Day weekend, too, isn't it, in the United States? Because a lot of times, um, excuse me, on that, yeah, Labor Day weekend rolls into September 1st and 2nd, but it's the last couple days of um, August as well. Excuse me one second. Yeah, because a lot of times I will use this card. It didn't register because it looks so different in this deck, but I will use the Three of Cups as a three-day weekend, like a holiday weekend. So we are going to have that holiday weekend at the very end of the month also. So by the end of the month, a lot of things that you've been waiting on, waiting on, are going to be in place, and there's going to be a lot of lot to celebrate. Okay, let's get your animal totem card. We've got the bee. There's bees on here, too, isn't there? It's not, but I thought it was. 
I thought I saw bees on here. I thought those were bees, just from far away, you know. Well, where there's flowers, there's bees, right? And there's a flower, you know, your, your flowers are getting pollinated, you know. <laughs> let's, let's read this. Maybe something more is going on in that hot tub, huh, <laughs> Sanji's? <laughs> Fertility, abundance, creativity, propagation. Strong connection to home and family. Accomplishing tasks in a timely manner. Tasting the sweet nectar of life, yes. Tasting that sweet nectar, enjoying life, celebration, having fun, putting down your burdens. Put down your burdens and have a little fun. Things are working out. Some things might be behind the scenes here, too, with the moon card. That could be things happening behind the scenes. Mercury's retrograde. You know, you don't, you're not sure. There's all kinds of things happening that you may know nothing about at this time. Okay, let's get our lots of love uh, lot for Sagittarius. And I got liar. So some of you have been dealing with a liar. You know, that is something. one of the meanings of the moon card, the negative meaning of it. Like somebody, it's, it's, it's not true, it's not real, they're lying. Or, um, sometimes that can be um, somebody who has a drug and alcohol problem, too, and then they're trying to cover it up. I hope that's not the case, but some of you might be dealing with that. Okay, next. It says a no on that one. And then finally, let's get our lots of proverb for... It says, love is blind. Yeah, yeah. That this is kind of going down a different path than the rest of the reading. But with that moon card, moon and verse, I do use that for drug and alcohol reviews. I do use that for things not being really what they seem. And love is blind. Sometimes you love somebody and, you know, you try to protect them and, you know, and they're lying and whatever's happening here. So just be aware of that. You know, even with the Mercury retrograde, with this, you know, don't take everything at face value. You know, just be a little bit more savvy on that. But as far as just you go, it looks like you go. I mean, things are really, really happening here. That says patient, but I saw patent. So some of you may be getting a patent if you've been doing this. You know, if you got an invention or something you're trying to patent, that might be coming through at this time also. All right, everybody. Well, thanks for tuning in. Remember, you are love and beauty incarnate. If you want to get in on that eclipse reading, it'll be available for a limited time. It's more astrology based, but there's other readings available on my site. You can head over to vickybilly.com or follow the links below, and you can find out all about it. Let me tell you all about it. Capricorn, you're up next. All right, Caps. Well, Capricorn, you know, um, Mercury's retrograde. Everybody feels that. New Moon in Leo, Full Moon in Aquarius. Neither are really kind of, uh, you know, uh, that compatible with you. But that doesn't, you know, it doesn't mean like nothing's going to happen to you this month. I'm sure lots of things are going to happen, and there's much, much to talk about and see and explore for caps. Okay, we've got the devil. That's actually your card, devil. It's the card for Capricorn. Ten of Cups. There you go. Nice. And the wish card. You got nine and ten of cups. That's really rare and really cool, you know. The, the, the um, I mean, I'm shuffling, but the cork, or not cork cards, the, uh, I'm calling them pips. They want me to say pips, which is another name for it. But the minor arcana is what I'm trying to say. The minor arcana, <laughs> they go just like a regular deck of cards. They go ace through ten. So the nine and the ten are the two highest cards of any particular suit, right? So the nine and the ten of cups is the most happiness, the most joy, the most good fortune. It's really awesome. Two of swords. It's going to make a decision. Uh, star? No, that's the, that's right. This is the Ace of w w Swords, but I always feel like it's the star. And then the Three of Pentacles, kind of waning. I just need to get a quick drink of water. I'm getting to the end, and my voice is starting to kind of <clears throat> wobble a little here. And I want to make sure I do a good reading for you. Well, look at... <clears throat> excuse me. Now, you talked about the nine and the ten in order. You've also got the ace and the, and the two in order of the wind songs or the swords. So you've got things are in order. Things are progressing along as they should be. And not only that, look at this. you got the one, two, and three. I mean, that's a different. That's earth. But you have one, two, and three in order. 
So it's just like things are moving along just as they're supposed to be. And Capricorn likes to see that. <laughs> Capricorn likes things moving along in order, right? Well, the devil, it can mean like you're in bondage or something, but really I feel like it's just representing you. It's your card. Some of you maybe, you know, I'm hearing holy matrimony. So some of you might be getting married, getting hitched, tying the knot, you know. You're going to be in bondage to somebody, but willingly, you know, happily. Or it could, somebody, they're talking about a contractual agreement. So some of you may be signing some kind of contractual agreement. I mean, under Mercury Retrograde, be careful on that. You know, if you could put it off till after you, you try to, but sometimes you just can't. If you have a lawyer look at it and it's cool, just go ahead, you know. Uh, but have the, ask the lawyer, not me, all right? Talk to the lawyer if it's a contract. But boy, is this a beautiful, sweet, now, sweet spot. But here we go with this Ace of, uh, it's about to happen. It's, it's rolling in, the Ace of Swords. But it reminds me of Star so much. So I love this card. It's Ace of Swords, it's, but it's more than the Ace of Swords. It is this beautiful blessing. There's beautiful things on the horizon. There's that star rising. It's the way she's, well, she's doing a singing bowl, it would appear. But I thought it was a wand at first. The way she's got that wand, it's like she's piercing through the veil into another. It reminds me of that famous uh, lithograph where the guy is reaching, he's in biblical times, and he's reaching out of the globe, the half globe of the world, and he's reaching out into space and the stars, like piercing the veil. Maybe I could find that really quick. Um, man uh, reaching... Uh, out. It's a lithograph of Earth. Let me see if I can find it. Earth. Uh, old uh, drawing, I'll say. Let's see if it'll come up. Yeah, it came up right away. This is the one I'm thinking of. Come on. Show me the whole thing here. Well, there it is. It reminds me of this famous drawing. How he's, you know, he's in his little world there, but then he's like reaching out and, you know, um, they, yeah, they have him in color and everything. I, I, but it's really, it's a black and white. I think it's a lithograph. Um, it's an engraving, yeah. Anyways, but that's what this reminds me of. Like piercing that veil the, like into this other world, a different world, a different, I mean, it looks really, really cool here. Two of Swords, somebody's making a decision, maybe it's you, maybe it's somebody else. Maybe it's this is these two birds, like these bird. I'm hearing birds of a feather. The birds of the feather fly together, you know. Uh, and then finally, the Three of Earth songs, which is the Three of Pentacles, but uh, God, the key is so strong, right? That's the only thing I could even... What is he holding, a saw or something? I mean, I don't know. Maybe somebody's holding a saw and... See, I didn't even realize this was his backpack. I thought this was like his face with the two eyes and he was wearing a hat or something. <laughs> it's actually somebody turned around and that's their backpack, if you can see. And they might be on stilts, even. Looks like they're walking on stilts on their books. But it's got, it is a hammer and, and a saw. So some of you are building something. But what I really got about it was, like, the apprenticeship is over. You've done that. You've learned. You've, you've done. You've done the work. You went to school. You read the books. You served your apprenticeship. You did all that stuff. And now, bam, this is coming in. You, it's, it's like the big payoff. That's what the guys are saying. And it might be monetary, but... The bigger thing, I mean, if if that's what's going to make you this happy, then maybe it is money for you. But it, even if there's money attached to it, it's more about the joy. The joy of the journey, they just said. It's more about the joy. It's more about the elation. It's more about the, uh, um, you know, the reaching that pinnacle of success, that top of the mountain where Capricorn likes to be. Okay, let's get this next one over here. The fox. Well, foxes, yeah, it's, it's got that trickster energy. It's the sly thing. But, of course, if you're falling in love, you might say, God, he's such, they're such a fox. I'm so attracted to him, you know. Okay. Sly, sexy, charming, shapeshifter. Elevated sense of smell, acute hearing, mediumship. 
camouflage retreat insulate survive keep to yourself till you know who to trust i'm not feeling that very strong i think the fox is just straight up you are into somebody and you think they're a fox or or maybe you're just feeling a little frisky yourself there cappies and you're feeling like hey man I, i'm looking pretty good here i'm pretty foxy or maybe you're just feeling like hey i'm pretty clever here I, i'm a pretty savvy clever a negotiator business person there or something like that okay let's get you lots of love student isn't that interesting because the three of pentacles is like the student part is over and if you even look at these two birds one is flying off you know so maybe you served your apprenticeship and now you're, you're moving from the student to the master or when the student is ready the teacher will appear that could be the teacher Dun, dun, dun. It's the teacher. Mm, mm. Revolution. Dun, 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 dun. What is that? Only thing to love is a teacher. Oh, a ball of confusion. That's what that is. Okay. This isn't ball of confusion. This is a ball of peace and joy and wonderful stuff. Okay, let's get the last card. You lots of proverbs. I got that stuck in my head now. A mind is a terrible thing to waste. Isn't that interesting? Right by the schooling card, right by the student. I mean, maybe some of you are going to go back to school. But that's not really the strongest feeling there. I feel like you're in a place of graduating. You're in a place... Well, you know, here's the other thing. We're moving to these final phases. This August... I think it's September. I should have checked this to see if Pluto's going back in. I think it's September, though. Because Pluto is going to go back in your sign for a hot minute, and then it's gone for some, whatever, 300 years or something. But let's just double check that. When is that going back in? Uh, no, not till the very beginning of September. That'll be the big news for next month's reading. But it's getting that, it's just that close. It's that close. So, you know, this is more of, I mean, maybe you have a little bit more lessons to learn, but you're seeing, you're seeing the payoff, right? You're seeing the glory of it all. That's what my guys are saying. You're getting the glory. The power and the glory. Okay. You got the power and the glory. What is that for? Never, never, never. Jesus Christ Superstar. I just watched that recently. All right. I love that. Ted Neely. I mean, God, well, all of them. They're just crazy good. Well, Ian Gillian also sang that on one of the, the original record or something, but that's, man. You know, I went through a phase when I was young on that movie. I loved it when it came out I was a kid. But then it, I thought later, oh, this is so corny and stupid. But now I watch it again. It's like, man, they are tearing it up, man. Those vocal. It's good. I like it again now. But anyways, now we're going to move on to the sign of Aquarius. Hey, Aquarius, we're going to have your full moon this month. Big news. You're going to have your full moon. You get that one new moon. You get that one full moon every year. So your full moon things are coming to fruition anything that you're wanting to remove from your life you want to purge you want to get rid of around this time or a couple days after I what how I would do it especially because mercury is retrograde if you're wanting to remove things from your life and clear clear out the rubble here um, I would do it um, you know make your list on the full moon and then maybe a couple days later actually do the ceremony or whatever you're going to do you know because we're in the time of leo you might want to do some ceremony of fire you might want to burn burn things in the fire of what you're trying to remove from your life what do we got here the queen of wave songs queen of cups nine of flame songs which is uh nine of rods and the magician Ooh, i love this magician card I love a lot of cards in this deck. This is an awesome deck. All right, let's get three cards from the uh, thing. This so reminded me, though, I thought she was playing a harp. And it reminded me of some kind of like art deco kind of thing or something for some reason. I'll get to it in a second. I'll show you closer in a minute. We've got the Two of Swords making a decision. Decisions being made. Eight of Rods. Things are going quickly. We've got Eight of Rods, Nine of Rods right in a row again. Six of Pentacles getting paid. That's right, show me the money, right? But look at this, look at her. Isn't this beautiful? And she's, um, well, it's like multidimensional or something. But it reminded me of like an Art Deco, like, um, statue or the way they had those metal, you know, Art Deco uh, kind of architecture, really. M more like that. Or maybe a statue or something. And then I thought she was playing a harp. 
But I'm not sure what she's doing. She's just, in, you know, she's reaching into other worlds and she's creating. And she's, um, she's, um, it was, it's a water sign energy. It could be a Scorpio, a Cancer, Pisces person. Or you, if you have planets, you know, maybe you are in cusp of Pisces or you have planets in those things. But she, um, you know, she's definitely, and this vessel, you know, this, this shape of this vessel here, you know, the, the vase or whatever it is, this whole vessel thing. You know, this is, this is very powerful. This, to me, is one of the most powerful cards in this reading. Uh, but, you know, you're making a decision. It's like you're kind of kind of feeling it out you know it's mercury retrograde maybe you're just kind of feeling it all out what do i what what do i want to do i you know i want to reach out and try other dimensions i want to get beyond this the vessel that i've been kind of encased in i want to reach out beyond that and the nine of rods you know normally the nine of rods is having um you know having being on guard but in this case look it's all this different stuff all your interests You've got this paintbrush, the ballet slippers, you know, there's all these different things going on. So you're dabbling, you're reaching in, you're dabbling with all these different activities, and, and that almost looks like a, a dang, uh, it is a harp, maybe. Is that a harp? I thought that was a harp, and I think this is a harp, too. So maybe somebody out there plays harp. I mean, that's a that's an instrument that not a lot of people play anymore. And they, I mean, maybe they're just even trying to get me to say harp, and it could be like blues harp, like a harmonica. But I think it's an actual harp, you know. And then look at this beautiful magician card. I love this card in this deck. Oh, it's just gorgeous. And the magician, he has the whole world. He he can do whatever he wants. All this stuff, any of it. It's all there for the choosing. Anything you want to do right now, it's all there for the choosing. And um, these are fall and spring, you know. So there's this energy of something ending, something beginning, or changing of the seasons. Now, we're not going to change seasons this month, but next month we are. We'll be changing seasons uh, next month. Something's making a, a, a decision here, whether it's you or the other person, and things are just moving, moving, moving. And they're going in order again. We've got this eight and nine. The, eight, the, eight, the nine follows the eight. So things are moving along, and it, you know, as much as they can with the Mercury retrograde. But it seems like for you guys, things really are moving along pretty. They're clipping right along, they're saying. And Six of Pentacles, you're going to have the money to do it, whatever it is. You're going to get the money. Some of you are going to get a loan because you want to build something. Some of you are going to get some kind of a gig, maybe playing harp or something, or or maybe you're going to get win tickets to go see an orchestra perform, or, or and you'll be inspired by it. Um, but there is some kind of payout here. And this eight is really grabbing me. So I want to say it's the eighth month, which is August, right? But it might be even on the eighth for some of you, like the eighth of the ninth. You may get, if you've been waiting to hear something, you may get that word on the 8th or the 9th, and then you're, then you're all set. You're in the position of power, you're the musician, and you're ready to roll. You can do whatever you want to do. Uh, but yeah, a lot of creativity, a lot of music, a lot of art, a lot of beauty. You know, it feels like you're really uh, kind of indulging yourself, but not in a bad way. You know, you're immersing yourself in art, beauty, whatever is beautiful to you. Because look, at he's in this beautiful garden, too. It doesn't have to be necessarily going here in the heart player, if that's not your jam, you know. <laughs> whatever it is, but just feels like there's so much beauty and creativity around you this month, Aquarius. New. So, somebody new of lots of love if you're looking for... Looking for love to call my own. Somebody get up money. Make my bed, looking for love. Negative. To come out on. Okay, lots of, I know I forgot the animal tone. I'll get it. Let me put it over here so I don't forget all together. Um, proverb. The early bird catches the worm. Hmm. That's interesting, too, because this can be talking about, you know, Get in while the getting is good. Early bird catches the worm. Okay, I, I didn't forget the animal tone. I did for a second, but now I remember. We're going to get you. We're going to get you, get you, get you, get you. One way or another. The ant. Well, the ant's about working really hard. But you know what? Working really hard on stuff you love, that's not working hard. That's just, you know, 
having that freedom and having that blessing to be able to do that is freaking awesome. But it's also, the magician's a singular person here, and she's singular too, but the ant is the bigger, that's about the bigger community, okay? Working tirelessly for the good of all, connecting with community and knowing our place in it. You can move mountains and make miracles happen. Well, the magician, he's all about making those miracles happen too, isn't he? He can make magic happen. Magic and miracles, Aquarius. That sounds pretty sweet, huh? All right, well, Aquarius, enjoy your full moon. Get your get your stuff together. What do you want to... It could be something finally just comes to fruition because of the timing of your full moon. Maybe something that you set your intention for all the way back around your birthday time when you had your new moon. But it's going to be powerful. All right, next we're going to move on to the sign of Pisces. Hello, my Pisces friends. Happy to have you here for the month of August reading for Pisces. This is for sun rising and moon. I mean, you could take it as far as you want. I've seen people are saying Venus and Mars now and every other dang thing. You know, whatever. If you resonate with Pisces energy on whatever level, or if you're watching for somebody else who's Pisces, then perhaps this reading is for you. I hope you do get a message. If not, check out your other, you know, check out the rising moon. Check them all out. All right, let's get some shuffle going for Pisces. This is going to be for August for Pisces, sun, rising, moon, as far as I'm concerned. One, two, three. We've got the temperance, beautiful angelic presence, the fool, two major arcana. Let's move that. And the king of pentacles, earth sign, energy, or the money person. Let's cut three over here for the bottom row. We've got uh, the ace of pentacles. The Four of Swords, or Rods, and finally, the King of Cups. You've got two kings in this reading. King of Cups could totally be you, because you are the water sign person, okay? And, uh, but, but it could be another water sign person, the Scorpio, Cancer, Pisces, any of you guys. But the king, the king is always, but you've got two kings here, right? And the kings are always, regardless of gender, the kings are the more advanced person. They're further along on their pathway. There's somebody, they're not a novice. They've got experience. They've got know-how. You're stepping into the role of the wise elder. That's what my guides are saying. And, you know, that's not surprising either because Saturn is in your sign. So Saturn brings that energy. Saturn brings the Capricorn energy too, Earth sign energy. Stepping into the role of the wise elder. The very first card out here is this temperance card. So you're working with your guides and angels. You're co-creating with the universe. And you're ready to break out and make a new path. You're not carrying the baggage from the past anymore. It's being purged. It's being taken off your shoulders. The Ace of uh, Pentacles is coming in. I want to show you this another card that I just love in this deck. Um, it's, it's, see, it doesn't even show money. It shows all about nurturing, growing, the garden's growing, the baby's growing, the farm is growing. You know, it's all about being in abundance. It doesn't necessarily always have to be about cash and coin and stuff like that. So there's this Ace of Pentacles, this new abundance. <clears throat> Excuse me, this new abundance, this new bounty. And the Four of Rods, which is, the, you know, and normally I use that for... Um, moving house or sometimes getting married or getting serious in a relationship but most of the time I use it more about the house and putting these two together maybe some of you are going to find the house maybe you're going to even get a, some of these are beehives I think back here but maybe they're gonna, you're going to move into a tiny house and you love it you know and whatever you're wherever you're going you're flourishing it's interesting because she's nursing the baby and then this is like the womb too if you look, I, th I believe that this is a woman's arms, and then this is her womb in here, too. So some of you, if you've been looking to get pregnant, that could be a possibility. But you're giving birth to something. It doesn't necessarily have to be um, a baby. N not, not at all. And, you know, that almost looks like a wedding ring, too. So some of you, maybe you are going to move in together, buy a house, get married, something like that. But you absolutely are moving into, see this tiny house and he's got the little bag. Some of you are definitely downsizing. I'm, I'm picking that up for sure. So you might be downsizing. But you're moving into a better situation, moving into abundance, moving into happiness, joy, flourishing. Um, you know, it's a very favorable time for you. It really looks wonderful. And contentment. If anything else, what I would say is contentment. You know what else is grabbing me? 
He's got the two hands, she's got the two hands. See the two hands and then the two hands on here. The temperance has the two hands. The This has the two hands. So there's something about the two hands. Things, something going hand in hand. You got a hand in the hand of the man who heals the water. <laughs> what was that? You got to put your hand in the hand. Do 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 do. <laughs> it's a really old song. Put your hand in the hand of the man who heals the water. I think I don't know if that's even right. Let's get your animal totem. You're putting your hand in the hand of somebody you love. It doesn't have to be whatever. There we go. Opossum, which is sort of like the hangman, but I'll tell you what, we're going with all this flourishing in the garden, you got the bees and the, the, all the stuff. Possums are awesome to have around too. They're very beneficial. They'll take care of mice and rats for you. They'll take care of fleas and ticks for you. Um, they're very good animals to have around and they're super gentle and they're super cool. I always hated, I've always i always had possums living in my garage. I haven't seen one lately because there's groundhogs in there now or whatever, but I used to have for years and years I had possums living in my garage and I would always get, I would get, I was like, get out of here, you know, and all this stuff and then I started to learn about them and, you know, they're really cool animals. The other thing about the possum, it's this, uh, they go into this altered state of consciousness, you know, when they, they're not playing dead, they kind of go into a, you know, they, it's, 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 it's uncontrolled, it's involuntary, you know, they, they, they're not doing that as a joke, hey, I'm playing dead, it just happens to them. But they are reaching through, they're piercing this, they're into this other consciousness. And that's the vibe I get off of here and also here with this communing with your guides, and even to some extent here. So getting into that meditative state, or maybe just finding that peace of mind and finding that peaceful state, you know, Mercury retrograde, though, maybe you do want to, you know, not play dead, but play quiet a little while. Some of you are going to be dating. Next, we're going to have our lots of answer. you got to put your hand in the hand, man who feels the water. <laughs> i got to look that up. Put your hand in the hand of the man. Da, da, da. Is that Bobby Gentry even? Do I even know the name of that? Oh, my gosh. We're, re we're reaching down way deep. If it's Bobby Gentry, I'm going to fall off the chair here. <laughs> I'm not, I hope I'm, I don't even put that on. I don't need to fall out and off anything. Put your hand in the hand. I might break something at my age. Let's see here. <laughs> oh, it's by Ocean. Why did I say Bobby Gentry? Well, that was still is that era when Bobby Gentry was uh, popular. It came out in 1971. What are some of these lyrics? we got to get some of uh, well, Elvis even did a version of it. Look at that. Lyrics. Let's see. I think it's about God, right? Who stilled the waters. Put your hand in the hand of the man who calmed the seas. Like that, calmed the seas. Take a look at yourself and you can look at others differently. Put your hand in the hand of the man from Galilee. So it's Christian oriented. That's Jesus, obviously. You can look it up later, but I just got to find out if Bobby Gentry did that song. And I'm not even sure who Bobby Gentry is. I don't know why that's falling and in, coming into my head. Oh, she did Ode to Billy Joe, Billy Joe McAllister. That's what she, that's her, that was her big hit. Jumped off the Tallahassee Bridge. Uh, she's still alive, too. Well, she was married to Jim Stafford. Interesting. He was the spiders and snakes guy. But anyways, I'm getting way off the thing here. <laughs> but I don't know why Bobby Gentry popped in my head, too, of all things. But anyways, let's go ahead and... Uh, I thought I actually thought Bobby Gentry was a, a man. I knew the name, but I, it's a woman. I see from the Google search. All right, let's go here. Lots of proverb for Pisces. Work smart, not hard. Yeah, you know, some of you might be just wanting to get out of the rat race. Maybe you're just like, you know what, we're working our asses off to keep this house up, this big house or this big penthouse or this big apartment or this big condo and to live in the city and do all this stuff. Maybe you're just going to say, hey, you know what, I just want to go get a tiny house and live off the land or, you know, and not enjoy life more and not have to work all the time to maintain this lifestyle or whatever it is, you know, uh, something like that, you know. All right. 
I got a little off track with that hand and the hand stuff, but they were not letting that go. I kept hearing that. <laughs> well, Pisces, remember you are loving beauty incarnate. If you want to get in on the eclipse reading, it'll be available for a little bit more. Well, a couple months. About six weeks. So if you want to get it, it's going to be a pivotal turning point. It's going to be a pivotal turning point for you, too, because now what's going to happen, if you didn't skip the intro, the eclipses, are, they always happen in opposite signs because of the nodes, right? So it's been happening in Aries and Libra. And what's going to happen, it's going to start happening in Pisces and Virgo. And a matter of fact, one of the eclipses is in your sign that we'll be discussing. It'll be in the full moon, lunar, the first of the many to come over the next year or so. We're in this transitory period. It'll be September 17th. It'll be an eclipse in your sign. So definitely Pisces will be impacted. But if you're not into that kind of reading, I have all kinds of different stuff on my, on my website. Check it out if you're interested, vickyreilly.com. Thanks so much for tuning in. It was great talking with you, and we'll be back for another reading coming up uh, soon. Okay, till next time.